Welcome to Fear Street. <laughs> It started out a few months ago when we moved into our new home. I grew up in a rural community, but there were plenty of neighbors and mostly fields around. No woods. Given that I'm the youngest child, my parents waited until I was done with high school to move, so as not to affect my already well-established life. Although we'd always lived in a small rural community, my parents were ready for something a little more secluded. Something with a lot of acreage, woods, and a place to shoot. They put my childhood home up on the market, and soon found their dream home, which is where I am currently. The house and property are beautiful. It's a large turn-of-the-century house facing 15 acres of land, the majority of which are woods, and a nice half-acre pond. The best part, or so I thought, is that there are no neighbors within a mile of us. At first, I really enjoyed it. Being out in the woods was very much a cathartic experience for me. It helped shed the stresses of school and studying. Being among the tall trees in the surrounding nature made all of my problems seem totally insignificant, so I made the habit of going on regular walks through the woods. As the weeks went on, I started noticing strange things as I went on my walks. I'd find partially eaten deer scattered along the leaf-littered ground, accompanied by a putrid, rotting smell, which I attributed to the carcass in front of me. At first, I thought nothing of it. It was probably coyotes, I'd tell myself. I started carrying a gun with me on my walks, just in case I encountered the animal that was responsible for the carnage that I'd seen in front of me. As the days went on, I started noticing more and more mutilated deer scattered across the floor of the woods, still accompanied by that rotting smell which I again attributed to the animals. If the increasing number of mutilations weren't enough, I started to notice a change in the sounds coming out of the woods. What had once been a cacophony of sounds was now mostly dead silence, minus the low guttural growl that seemed to be growing more prevalent, more pronounced, and more insidious each day. By this point, I'd stopped going on my little walks. Gun or no gun, I didn't want to risk the chances of facing whatever was causing these events. That being said, my curiosity eventually got the best of me one night, as I heard its growls. I decided that I was going to go and get a trail cam and set it up out in the woods the following day, in hopes of finally seeing what it was that was out there. The next evening, after work, I gathered up what little courage I had left, and camera in hand, went walking out into the very woods I'd promised myself I'd stay out of. I never did get to set up the trail cam. I lost it somewhere in the woods while I was in a panic, running for my life. I made it about a hundred yards past the tree line into the woods when I decided to stop and set up the camera. I thought it was a good place to set it up, and quite frankly, I was too scared to go any further. After all, I wanted to spend as little time out there as possible, given the ongoing events, and the fact that it'd be dark soon didn't help. Already on edge, every creak of the wood and every crunch in the leaves sent me into a panic. Rushing to set the camera up, I dropped it, sending it to the leaf-ridden ground with a thud. Murmuring under my breath, cursing myself for being out there, I bent down to pick it up, when I started to smell that putrid smell of rotting flesh again. I carefully looked around, checking my surroundings to see if anything was out there. I could feel something watching me, but I couldn't see anything. Just as I was finishing picking my supplies off the ground, I heard that low guttural growl again, as well as the snap of a branch to my right. I quickly turned, seeing a human-like creature standing there, staring at me. I was completely frozen with fear. It had human features, was standing on two legs, and it had feet and hands. The two things that threw me off, however, were the fact that its skin was charred black as if it had been burnt in a fire, and most disturbingly, it had no upper or lower lips. Although mostly bald, 
a few thin scraggling hairs stuck every which way out of its scalp. Its sharp teeth were hanging out like hypodermic needles. With the absence of lips, its raw red gums hung out in the open. Thick strings of what appeared to be saliva dripped off of its chin in a persistent stream. For one single brief moment, the world around me seemed to stop. I quickly went through options about what to do. There were really only two viable options. Either stay exactly where I was and get attacked and most likely killed by this thing. Or I could get the hell out of there. I chose the latter. I quickly scrambled to my feet and ran as fast as I could, throwing my camera in vain at the creature behind me. In the chaos of what had just happened, I found myself to be momentarily lost after running in what I thought was the right direction for what felt like 20 minutes, but it couldn't have actually been longer than 30 seconds. Looking around and not seeing the spawn of hell that I would just encountered, I stopped to collect myself and try to find the way back to the house. I finally decided on the general direction in which I should head, when I heard a commotion that almost sounded like a horse pounding its hooves on the dirt. I looked behind me and saw that thing, whatever it was, running at me on all fours, mucus-like spit flying out of the corners of its mouth, like a rabid dog. I ran as quickly as I possibly could without daring to look behind me. Although I wouldn't look at it, I could hear it galloping behind me and smell its rotted flesh. Tears ran down my cheeks, and I thought there was no way possible to make it out of the woods alive, when I finally saw the lights of my house out of the clearing. Using what little adrenaline I had left to sprint the 200 yards or so to my back porch, I quickly opened the door and slammed it shut, not daring to look out the window. It's been about a month now since that happened. I haven't told anyone, and I won't dare to go back out into those woods. I've been doing a lot of research to see if I could find any clues as to what that thing might have been. I've exhausted myself, but I think I may have come to a conclusion. The closest thing I could find was possibly a skinwalker. I know my sighting doesn't entirely match up with the stories I've heard, but it's the closest thing I've found. I've lived in Idaho all my life and spent a lot of time outside and in the wilderness as a kid. My grandparents would take me camping, and my older brother and I would always hike up whatever trail we could find to get a view of the sunset. On one of these occasions, something terrifying happened. We were up at a campsite I only know as Warm River. The river there never freezes over. And my brother and I were on a regular evening hike. There was an old tunnel bored through the mountain at one part of the trail, probably an old train tunnel, and we were walking through it when I heard something I'll never forget. After walking probably two-thirds of the way through the tunnel, I heard a terrible screech at the end we had entered through. It wasn't like anything I've heard before. I've heard the screams of animals on dark and windy nights. I even think I've heard Bigfoot calls a few times, but never the metallic, grinding screech I heard that day. The point is, whatever sound it was, it didn't sound natural in any capacity. I probably jumped five feet in the air when I heard it, and my brother shouted a few choice words before shooing me quickly to the exit of the tunnel. At this point, my brother decided we should just continue walking and head back after whatever had made the noise hopefully cleared out. We didn't have any firearms on us, so I was pretty upset. My brother reassured me that we'd be fine, and we made the walk back without incident. However, I didn't get any sleep that night. Whether it was the thing that screeched at us or just my imagination, I heard things moving around the campsite the whole night, as well as whispers echoing through the darkness outside the trailer. I woke my brother up a few times to check out what it was, but he refused each time, telling me it was probably just other campers staying up late and enjoying themselves. The rest of the trip was pretty normal. We packed up the following day and headed out. I was pretty shaken up, but chalked what had happened up to being a harmless event that I must have been exaggerating in retrospect. A few weeks later I went up to Pine Basin. It was an old ski lodge my family rented each year for family reunions. Here I'd mess around with my cousins, our favorite activities being night games. We'd play hide and seek, and a game called Ghosts in the Graveyard, and other games like that. In one instance I was chosen to be it for hide and seek, 
Because I was one of the younger cousins, I got a flashlight as an advantage. Normally all the younger cousins hid close to the lodge, and the older cousins hid in the trees or at the base of the nearby mountain. As I was searching near the bottom of the mountain, I heard a familiar whistle up the mountain a bit. We'd always whistle as a hint to our locations. It sounded like someone was hiding way up near a tree known as the underwear tree. You can guess why. So I began trekking up toward the whistle. As I climbed closer, I got an uneasy feeling in my stomach. I continued on warily and convinced myself that I'd be fine. I hated walking in the night alone, but figured whoever I find would walk me back to the lodge. As I neared the tree, I noticed that it was deathly silent. This alerted me that something was very wrong, because you could always hear the adults having fun back at the lodge. I was anxious to get back, so I called out, I found you, Scott. I thought the whistle had come from Scott, which is my older cousin. Come back down with me. I got no reply, but I wasn't planning on waiting. As I began walking back down the path, I heard a voice call, You almost had me. So I ran back up to investigate. I flashed my light in the branches of the tree and saw a monstrosity that wasn't my cousin. It looked like a poorly drawn stick figure made into a human with its emaciated body and lifeless eyes. I remember its face looked like the skin on its head was being pulled from behind. It had torn and stretched features. As soon as I saw the creature, I screamed, dropped my flashlight and ran back to the lodge. The entire time I was running, I was overcome by an overpowering smell and I could hear the thing running after me. As I approached the camp, I saw a few people at the bottom of the mountain waiting for me. I was crying and shaking and they took me inside. I told my dad what happened, but my cousins all said they didn't see anything following me. The adults kept us inside for the night, and I kept hearing sounds drifting in from the mountains. I never played night games after that happened, and was always terrified that my cousins wouldn't listen to my warnings. Ever since that night, I've always felt uneasy up in those mountains. I used to be really religious and figured it was a demon of some kind trying to kill me or something. But those mountains have never felt the same after that incident. A few years ago, the game Until Dawn became really popular, and I watched a walkthrough of it on YouTube. When the Wendigo first appeared in the game, I got chills down my spine. It was exactly what I had seen, and I did a ton of research on them. I figured someone must have gotten snowed in at that old lodge and resorted to cannibalism, but that still doesn't explain what happened at Warm River. I still hear that screech from time to time, and it scares the hell out of me every time. I heard it earlier tonight, that's why I decided to finally write my story. <laughs>